Good evening everyone. Welcome. My name is Dina and this is my channel about my cross stitch adventures. I'm so delighted that you've come along with me um, to see what I've been doing. <laughs> I also appreciate very much those of you who comment, let me know what you're working on or give me uh, feedback on which one of the whips I'm working on you like the most. Um, or answer questions that I ask and things like that. So thank you. I don't do that often enough to tell you how much I appreciate you uh, talking back and forth with me through the comments. But today is um, August 1st. I may have mentioned that already. Forgive me if I'm repeating myself, but it um, is the first day of a new month. I did 22 new Christmas starts in 2022 for my July uh, Christmas stitching. And now I am uh, working up some new plans for the month of August and throughout the rest of the year. So my plan for August, I decided to uh, work on a little bit for an idea and then wait and get the acrostics that I like to complete and my animal adventures and things like that all around me so I could use it all as I was planning. So when I did my acrostics for my um, monthly magazine challenge group, um, I, I always say that backwards, sorry, the magazine monthly challenge group, and for my 24 hours of cross stitch, those are the two acrostics that I do every month. I enjoy them so much. And this month is no exception. In fact, in the magazine monthly challenge group, the acrostic this month, you could do either um, bird or you could do bird house and since I have a lot of whips to work through now uh, after all my starts I decided to do bird house so today I sat down and wrote out each letter what I was gonna do for each of those and then I used that list also when I looked at 24 hours of cross stitch because um, if you've been watching me for very long, you know I like to double dip when I'm working on several different prompts. And so when I'm doing 24 hours of cross stitch, this acrostic this month is keep making X's and it's 12 letters long. So I thought, well, some of those letters might work for some of the same things that I'm working on for my um, magazine monthly challenge. And sure enough, they do. So I've put them in both acrostics where I could. And then, as you know, I'm in a closed group and that group puts out challenges every week. Now you have two weeks to work on each challenge, so they overlap. But um, we got one last Friday and I have done two of those uh, as of uh, today because one, I could use my coupon um, for stitching so many stitches in June. I had a coupon I could use in July for any of the weekly challenges that started in the month of July, and this started on the 29th. So I used my coupon for one that was going to be hard for me to match, and then today, on the 1st, I was able to complete one um, additional prompts in that group of five. So I'll tell you what I stitched and tell you how it meets the prompts. This is the um, book that I got this project out of. It was one of my Christmas starts that I was doing on perforated paper. And I will just show it to you now because I finished it today. I'm so excited. Here you are. Let's put a piece of paper behind it. Let's maybe let you see it a little bit better. This is going in my last Christmas card that I wanted to make for this Christmas. And um, I think it's precious. Merry Christmas. When I started on this, I had the word Christmas and part of this ornament stitched. I had the two red colors in the ornament. I did not have the white and I didn't have it back stitched. But I had Christmas and that little red ornament done when I started on it today. And the reason that I could use it in my challenge is because my prompt said you had to stitch on a whip that you could stitch in the colors blue, green, or yellow. And as it turned out, I had to stitch the word Mary and I had to stitch all these ornaments and they were all green and yellow. This was the only ornament I had to stitch that didn't qualify. 
And so I did that. I did all the green and yellows first. I did this last so I could count all these stitches. And it turned out really, really well. My yellow stitches were 54 and my green stitches were 264. And then when I added everything together, including the purple and the back stitching that was gray, because I could only count this back stitching, which is green. And I did count that because I needed it. But when I put everything in there together, I had 373 stitches in this today, but it is a finish. So that is one of my 22 new starts that I was actually able to finish today. Tickled to death about that. And it's the last one I was doing on perforated paper, so I'm through with that now. I'll put it in my card, and then um, I'll have my cards over there to finish up and I'll have them ready for Christmas. So I'm real excited about that. Um, so I can unkit all of this now and uh, get ready to uh, put the floss back into circulation because as you know, I ran short on floss um, this past uh, month when I was trying to kit everything up. So we'll put that away. Now, in addition to meeting the prompt that needed to be stitched in green or yellow, uh, I used that same piece of Merry Christmas for both my acrostics. So for my um, acrostic for the magazine uh, monthly challenge, the I in the word birdhouse for me stood for in pursuit of a finish, Merry Christmas ornament. And so I did just that. I finished it today, so I was able to check that one off. So that's one of those letters done. And then in my 24 hours of cross stitch, I used it for the letter M in the acrostic keep making X's. So the M stood for Merry Christmas ornament. So I was able to strike one of those off in each of my acrostics. So today, finishing that one ornament hit three prompts for me. That's the way I like to do it. <laughs> when people ask me, you know, how do you do so many prompts? Well, that's how I do it. I double dip it. I just let it count whenever I can. Now in the closed Facebook group, we can never double dip. We can never use the same stitches in one challenge for something else. So when I'm using my Enchanted Alphabet, for Animal Adventure, I can't use those same stitches for a another weekly challenge. You, you have to do f new stitches on everything. It has to be exclusive to that event because it's in the same group. And they're trying to help you get a lot of stitches in, so they don't want you double dipping within that same group. But within different groups, you certainly can. So that works out really well. I had a very interesting comment today on um, my video that I put up for the last week of my July stitching and and, um, and and well actually I don't think they even put it on the video I think they actually messaged me privately but the the comment was asking if I would show again because they knew I had done it sometime in the past my storage of my patterns how I store my patterns and um, how I store my whips. And I think, because I've also kind of mentioned that my, it might be time for a whip parade since I've added so much to my whips, I did get a resounding yes back from that uh, in my comments. So I think it may be good to do a special floss tube that incorporates all of that. I would kind of like to do um, a, a whip parade and I could, um, probably at, at the same time or start with showing the finishes I had from July from my Christmas in July stitching since I I did finish I think it was eight in total uh, now as of today but I thought that might be a fun way to get it started and then to show you my whips um, and I'm toying with whether to do it in order of date of start or I'm thinking that may be the most fun because then you'll see the oldest stuff first and then the more recent stuff will be at the end. But um, I would like to do that, I think. And it would be, I think, a good idea 
then once I have finished that and I put everything back in its place of where I'm gonna store it, that I show you how I'm storing that. And that would give you the answers, you know, that you're looking for. Um, so back on July 30th, I went ahead to uh, begin to hit my whip go goal for July. And my whip go goal for July was to a new start and it was to start my Halloween Quaker. And this is by Lila's Studio. I've heard it Lila's Studio and Lila's Studio. I'm sorry, I don't know which it's supposed to be, but if you know, please let me know so I can say it correctly as I talk about this. Um, but this was the one I needed to start. And my uh, goal on Whip Go was the first large motif in the corner, which is this one. Um, because this little one here would not be enough for a Whip Go goal, I don't think. So I did this one. That was my goal. I got started on it. I worked on it the 30th sum and the 31st sum. But I didn't have a lot of stitching over the weekend. Y'all know my son was coming over and spending time with me, so... Um, I got some done, but not as much as I would have hoped, but here you go. And I'm thinking, I'll look here, see if I can tell you how many stitches I got. Uh, so I'll, in the two days total, I got, um, 384 stitches. Um, so there's the first little motif in the corner, and this is the start of the big one that was my goal for whip go so I'll still be working on that I got it started I didn't get it finished so I can't mark it off but um, I will be working on it as I go this month to try to get it done maybe before I start um, the new start for August because I would like to get this one to the point where I've met the goal on it before I start yet another one and try to meet the goal on it so that I wanted to share with you as well so that's my plans I will probably do something sim similar in September, except I know September sometimes is called Sampler Month, and I do have a sampler. Um, Autumn in the Country is uh, a sampler, and so I very well make that may make that a focus piece uh, for September and just work on it every week for a day or something uh, to honor Sampler September but I'll have other goals that I wanna hit as well. So we'll go from there. But that's what I'm planning, and I hope you've made some plans if you like to plan, or I hope that you're stitching whatever you want, if that's how you like to do it. But either way, happy stitching, everybody. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> it is Tuesday, August the 2nd, and I am here to give you a really exciting stitching update. Well, I did it. I went ahead and grabbed a piece I had been working on, um, you know, to, in order to get it to a finish, and I just stitched on it until I did. I started working on it yesterday right after I finished my little ornament and I worked on it late until the night, and it was past midnight when I finished it today. So it is a finish on the second in the wee hours of the morning, but it is Welcome Home by the Cricut Collection, and I am tickled to death to have it finished. Uh, so putting it in my Animal Adventures really helped because I concentrated on it. I worked, um, probably six of the eight prompts uh, in my animal adventures I did on this welcome home. So it really helped me to get it, um, you know, onto a finish. So here is what mine looks like. I did mine in the called for colors. I did it on a beautiful fabric called Mummy. It's a 32 count Lugana. It's from Be Stitch Me. And I'm so tickled because look, I have a whole lot left. I just did it at this end because it would fit on the end and I can now cut it off and frame it and um, have it 
finished. Um, so I, I did all the call for colors. I didn't change anything. I kind of liked this color palette because it matches my bedroom colors of the teals and the, that, that bluish color. Um, and I, I just thought that'd be great because now I can either put it in my bedroom or I can put it uh, in my living room because I have those teals somewhat in my living room as well and my carpet is in there. So I think it would be pretty and it can stay up all year long and I love that. So here is my welcome home. So this is my second finish for the month of uh, August already, which is great, but this is a bigger finish, so I'm real tickled about that. And um, I'm happy that I got it done. That means now I'm down to 28 whips, <laughs> which is great. <laughs> they're coming down, they're coming down. Um, I had a few more goals for this month that I'm gonna be working on. And uh, I will look at my prompts today. I was able to use Welcome Home for a prompt um, in one of my acrostics, and I will also be able to use it for my very first animal adventure because I actually stitched 940 stitches to finish this, and I only needed a maximum of 500 for my animal adventure. If I had been thinking, I could have stopped and taken pictures every 300 stitches and I would have had three prompts with this, but I wasn't thinking. I was just stitching away and I was listening to a uh, audio book and I, I just kept stitching and kept stitching and, kept, and then I thought, oh, I could finish this if I just, you know, do a little bit more, a little bit more. So uh, I finished it this morning, but that's okay because it is now complete and that means next month, I get to put a new uh, project in uh, for my animal adventures to work on uh, to make it three because this was one of them and now it's finished. So you get to replace it the next month. So that's what I'll be doing. I hope you like it. It's so cute. I really, really, I really do like it. My friend Glow and, um, also is stitching this and so I'm really delighted that um, I got mine done because I think Yes, she's finished hers too. They all finished it before me. <laughs> I just had way too many other things I was working on. But I just wanted to come and share this with you. Now, it is still just early afternoon, so I very well may get to do more stitching today. So you know the drill. If I do, I'll share it with you later. And if not, I'll see you when I have something uh, else to share. In the meantime, happy stitching. Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> Welcome, this is Dina. It is August the 2nd, it is a Tuesday, and per a request from one of my viewers, I'm gonna do a quick whip parade. I'll try to do it fairly quickly for you, but because I had so many new starts for July, uh, for Christmas in July, I was asked if I would now share my whips that I have, the larger number that I have. So the first thing I thought I would do is to share with you the finishes I had in July and the first two days of August because they were sort of wrapping up uh, the Christmas starts that I had and then uh, one that was just a whip that I brought to a finish, which was great. So let's start with the, the finishes first. So here's the first one. This is called Angel. It's done on perforated paper these are little cards that you can buy from your local needlework shop. If you don't have a, a shop like we don't here in Georgia, I have to get some of mine from 123 Stitch. But it's a trifold card. There's a back here uh, that opens and that's where you put your, your card insert and it just folds open so that when your recipient opens their card, it looks like this and you can write on the inside. So here's Angel. These first few came out of a book that was a um, Better Homes and Gardens Cross Stitch Christmas. And um, I shared that with you previously if you've seen my videos, but that's where these came from, the first three or so. Um, 
because I have these big open cards. These patterns were originally drawn or created for an afghan, and I actually had a commenter tell me that they had stitched them originally when they came out on an afghan, which I thought was great because they were familiar with them. This is mittens. I chose to do it this way, or you can hold it this way, and I made it so that when you open the card up, it looks appropriate. So here's mittens. This one had a lot of back stitching in it. This one was candle. It also had quite a bit of back stitching on it, but I think it's really, really pretty. Again, on the perforated paper. And then as I went down into my um, stash of cards, I realized that the ones I had bought more recently than those, the opening was different and I had to scramble and um, go back to my uh, stash and I found a book called The Big Book of Christmas Quickies. It's a leisure arts publication. So the next three came out of that. So here's candy. This is Elf. This is one of my favorites. He's just so, so festive and he looks like he's just very mischievous. And this is the one I finished yesterday. I didn't get to finish this when I got started with it. I didn't have enough time that day to finish it. It was the only one of these that I didn't finish in one day that on the day that I started it in July, but I did put this first on the list and I finished it yesterday. This is called Merry Christmas. So those were my six Christmas card finishes, and they were all started in July. And I actually have the book here for the last three, so I can show you what it looks like. If you wanna get that. Okay, so the next two finishes I wanna share with you, one is a Christmas start in July, and it was called Festive Puppy. It was gifted to me by my friend Glow. It was a kit, and I've stitched it, and now I'm in the process of fully finishing it. I haven't completed that process, but I've got the, um, the cross stitch mounted on the board, and now I'm going to um, cover another board and make uh, just a flat ornament out of it but I think it's really really cute and I love the fabric that I'm using for the other board I just don't have it right here with me because that's over on my finishing table but that's festive puppy and it's a DMC kit so now the last one I want to share with you my last finish I just finished in the wee hours this morning and it uh, I've just shown it um, in my previous segment and so this is Welcome Home, and it is by the Cricut Collection. And I have it on a beautiful Be Stitch Me fabric. It's a, this one is a Jobelin. It is a 32 count Jobelin, and the color name is Mummy. And I'll show you how pretty this fabric is. So, really, really nice. So I've got that one ready now to frame. I'm gonna see if I have something in my stash of frames that I've gotten from the resale store and see if I can make that work in one of them. I think that would be awesome. And then of course I've got plenty of this fabric left over that I can put back in my stash for something later uh, coming down the road. So I like that. So those were my finishes during the month of July and then wrapping it up this morning uh, with my most recent finish because you'll, you've will you been seeing this one a lot and you might have wondered why did I leave that one out and that's because it's finished. Okay, so I thought it might be interesting to take these um, whip parade from oldest to newest. So I pulled my cards where I write all of my information down as I start a project I have just three by five cards, and I normally keep them in alphabetical order. And the reason I do that is that if I get a question on my channel about one of my whips I'm sharing, and someone asks me, I can run get 
my card really quick in alphabetical order. I can find it easy and I can tell you fabric when I started it, who the designer is, that sort of thing. I don't put a whole lot of information on here, just the basics. So today what I did is I took those cards out and I put them in date order from start date. And that way you'll see the oldest ones first and the most recent starts at the end. I thought that might be fun. So that's how I'm gonna do it. So the first five that you're gonna see in my whip parade were all started before 2022. I have five whips that I've had since before this year. Um, so that's not too many. I'm pretty, pretty pleased with that. And some of them are fairly large. So you'll see that's why they're still going on. So the very first one of those is Winter Quaker. I started Winter Quaker on December 29th of 2019. And it was part of a Winter Quaker salve that was started on Facebook. Um, this is a Rosewood Manor. It's designed by Karen Kluba. And I'm using the called for 28 Cashel in Dwarf. And I'm using the called for Valdani Thread Pack. And this is where I've gotten to so far. This is where you saw it last. I haven't worked on it since you've seen it. But I do want to answer something. Um, on my last video where I showed this as a whip in progress, uh, one of my commenters indicated to me that I had missed a section of it somewhere in the middle top or something that I had not stitched something. I've gone back and looked at it and there's nothing missing. So it could be the variegated thread might not have shown the stitching very well in that camera. Um, I don't know, but I, I came back and looked at it and there's nothing missing. So. I think that motif is fully finished and I appreciate you letting me know to check it out, but I think it's fine. So the next time I pick this up, I will be moving on across here and try to get this row finished. And then I have, I can scroll it up and be working on it. So I'm counting this um, as a seasonal piece for winter, but when I do my whip go board next year, uh, for Christmas, if I have enough of these Christmas whips left over, that's my plan. Uh, I would put this one on the Christmas whip because of it being wintry with the red cardinals and all. You know, I think it would fit in pretty well with that. So that's Winter Quaker. The next whip I'm going to share with you, you've been seeing. It's a restart. I restarted it on May 31st, 2020 as part of Stitch Mania. This one is on my current whip go board. The goal on my whip go board is to stitch the angel, to complete the angel. And since then, I have noticed that the way it's charted, that's going to be hard to do because the angel actually runs into Joseph and Mary. So I am going to have adapted that. And my goal now is to finish this wing down to the page break. And then I can come over here and start working on these figures in the front and get those done. And then I can pull that wing on down to work it around the f people here because they have to be forefront. But I do want to finish the wing on down to the page break and then I will consider that my whip go goal. Oh, this is by Teresa Wentzler. It is on 28 count antique white even weave. It's a DMC Charles Craft fabric. It's just one I had in my um, stash when I restarted it. And I did the 28 count because of the one over one faces. I had originally started this on a 32 count linen and it did the faces just, it was awful. Anyway, y'all remember that if you've been watching me very long. Um, so there you go. My next whip is Mermaid, and Mermaid is also a Teresa Wentzler whip. So here's what Mermaid will look like when she's finished. And I am stitching her on a 28 count uh, Joblin, and it's the color is Queen Anne's Lace. And I think it's beautiful. 
So I have started working on that top border and I've worked my way over. I've started part of this medallion and then I needed to have a bunch of stitches in blue for, <laughs> for a prompt recently and I just went inside and did all that uh, to get all those uh, stitches in blue, started the sky. But this one has not been on my priority list because I've decided I need to have one Teresa Wentzler going at a time. So this one is actually sort of um, on the back burner. It's not put in time out. I just don't have to work on it every month. I use it when I need it for a prompt. And so I just keep it handy in case I need it. And then I put a little work into it about every other month just to keep it interesting. But um, I may adjust that now that I have so many whips. Sorry about that zipper. I have this in my Rika bag. This is my one and only Rika bag that I've been able to get. So there you go. That was started originally uh, June 15th, 2020. So it's, it's already seen its first birthday. Mm. Hasn't gotten very far, has it? And then we have Autumn Bell Pool. And my Autumn Bell Pool was started September 16th, 2020. And I just finished the letter T in the word Autumn. And I'm about to scroll this up this month because one of my goals is to get at least the lettering of the U done. I may not get all the stuff around it done this month, but I wanna finish the letter uh, U as far as this red part here. So I'll be working on that, hopefully in the next week or two. That's Autumn Bell Pool. That is by Stony Creek. I'm doing it on um, a 32 count Lugana and it is also Queen Anne's Lace. That's the second one that I'm doing on Queen Anne's Lace. And then my um, last one, that no, not last one from before this year, but my um, last 2020 is Pandemic. And that is all the way across. I'm working on pages four and five right now. I, the four is a full page, five is a partial page. But I have completed the first three pages. This is on a beautiful Platinum Lugana 32 count. And it is being stitched with DMC number 93. It's variegated, very heavily variegated thread. And so that's just one color that I'm, one, you know, number of flaws. It's certainly a lot more than one color because it's so variegated. So now we're headed into 2021. These are the ones that I started in 2021. So the first one is Hawk Run Hollow. I have my Hawk Run covered with my Garan Tote Bags Roller Frame cover because I travel with this one and I wanted to make sure I could keep it clean, taking it in and out of the car. So I'm working on spring at Hawk Run Hollow. I started it in October of 21 at the uh, retreat that Julie um, McConnell hosted at, uh, from Julie McConnell from Refle Reflections and Framing um, and Stitching. And I got it started there, and then I've been working on it ever since at a monthly Hawk Run Hollow stitching meetup. And I am on the second block. I've done the header, and um, I finished block one now. I'm on block two. And my goal for this month, if I can possibly make it happen, is to finish block two. That's what I would like to do in the month of August. Okay, the next one is Enchanted Alphabet. I started Enchanted Alphabet on my birthday in 21, December 14th, 2021. And it was my birthday start and it, because it had been a unicorn chart for me and someone gifted it to me. So that's what it looks like. It's that beautiful vintage alphabet and that little girl in her long flowing white dress and she's holding um, a bird, I think. Has a bird perched on her little finger. Um, so, 
this is where I'm at on Enchanted Alphabet. I love it. I am doing this on a 32 count Lugana and it's called Heritage. And I think that greenish gray color is just beautiful with that color palette. I really think those colors are popping off of there. I think it looks really good. My goal for this month, because this is one of my three pieces I use for my animal adventures every month, is to finish the girl. You can see how big her dress is. Um, I've got about a third of it done. So I have a bit of work to do on her. But I would love to get her finished by the end of the month because it'll be much easier then to push it to a finish in September with just lettering left to do. And that is my plan. She is in a beautiful Garan Toten Bag bag that has all the lovely ladies on it. <laughs> I think that's great very apropos since there's a young lady in the in the piece and then we get to 2022 so those are all of my whips that I started before this current year and my first uh, start that I still have going for 2022 is by the bay this one is gonna be a trilogy or a triptych except I'm not doing it like that. It comes with three patterns and I am doing all of them on one. So let me show you what that looks like. This is the beginning. And then we go here. And then we go here for the end. So it's just gonna flow all the way across as one flowing piece. They connect, they don't, you, they can stand alone or they absolutely butt right up against each other. And that's how I'm gonna stitch them, is just all one long piece. My plan is to put this in my living room above my couch. And so I wanted a big, long, substantial piece. And that's what I'm working on. So here's where I've gotten to on By the Bay. So I've done the first three, two, the first two pages of By the Bay. And I have um, to start now on the pages that start at the bottom. So I'll work on, you know, down near the foot of the tree there. And those are heavy stitching. This was easy peasy stuff. So that went really fast. Um, it is fun to work on. This is a 32 count Lugana. This is a beautiful um, blue skies fabric that's hand dyed by a friend of mine named Marissa. And she gifted this to me. Um, and I just felt it would be perfect for my By the Bay. So, and it's in a Garan Token bag bag as well. That's my butterfly bag. I think that's so pretty. That was started April 30th, 2022. And the interesting note about that is I had some people over for an overnight slumber stitching party that day. And um, I started it uh, while everybody was here. Uh, my friend Donna started to buy the bay and I started to buy the bay. The next one I wanna share with you was started as part of my mania in 2022. I started, I think four things, one every week four or five, I can't remember, but it was one a week. And this was one of my starts for Mania, and I started it on 5 9 22. And it's a Mirabilia, it's called Royal Games One. Yes, I have two, and I will be stitching both of them, but I'm stitching them on two pieces of fabric. But the pretty story about this one is that it was gifted to me, <laughs> and uh, I'm excited about that, but also that, um, I had a fabric that I repurposed. I had a fabric I was gonna do Crystal Christmas on. And when I decided not to stitch Christmas, Crystal Christmas, um, I was able to take that fabric and cut it into two equal pieces 
and this is the beginning of my Royal Games one. That is the bodice and arm and flower of the first, the queen of hearts. That's the one getting started there. And I think it's gonna be beautiful on this fabric. This fabric is from Silk Weaver. It's called Pixie Dust. And it is a Lugana. And I'm, I'm just thrilled to death with it. I think it's gonna be um, a really pretty, pretty piece when I'm through with it. And I have a second piece of that very fabric to do this, the second one on. So it will be it will be done on the same thing. Okay, our next one is one that I started in May. It was a mania start, and it's called Mr. Mittens. It's a Jeanette Cruz design, and it was, um, it's gonna be a gift for my sister Stephanie's mom, my adopted mom. And um, I'm very excited uh, to get to work on it this ah. month. I do have it slated for this month. And I'll show you Mr. Mittens. He's right up here. I'm doing him for um, Ellen because she collects clowns and she collects snowmen. And this is a snowman dressed as a clown. What are the odds, right? I asked my sister Stephanie if she thought mom would like it and she said she will love it. She will absolutely love it. So I went into my stash and I got a piece of um, Lugana, 32 count Lugana. The color is Tycho, Tycho, uh, by Picture of This Plus, T-Y-C-H-O, Tycho. Anyway, I've started him. This is how far I've gotten on him. I'm gonna put the bag behind him so you can see him because that window is, is shining right through today. Um, but that's where we are. I do have a goal on him for this month. I want to finish his arms and, and gloves and his top. So I wanna get the top portion of him complete so that all I have left to do are his pant legs and shoes maybe in the next month because I do wanna give this at Christmas. So that's where I am. This is a linen, um, so it's uh, it's got some slubs in it and I'm working around those, but the piece of fabric was the right color and it was the right size. And so that's why I grabbed that one. But this one is on the uh, plans to work on this month. So you'll get to see it again. And then another one of my mania starts was called Autumn in the Country. And um, I love it. I think it's gonna be a beautiful piece. And the fabric that I'm doing it on is actually called Autumn, and it's by Be Stitch Me. And I just, um, I need to redo the how this is rolled because you can see I've got some of the border up here done. But I had gone down to um, frog and realign the border that I had stitched one stitch too far over and I've got that finished now. But I have started the orange border at the top. So what I'm gonna do is show you what this is gonna look like. But I wanted you to see this fabric because it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, it's a 32 count Lugana. It's a Be Stitch Me fabric. And um, it's, the name of the color is Autumn. But this is what I am stitching on that. And what you could see is I've done the outer border all the way around. And now I've started on this orange border here so that I can make my borders in there match up and then I'll start working on it. But I love this piece. I can't wait to get back to working on it. I had so much fun getting it started. So that one's gonna be a really nice one. I started it on May 23rd, 2022, as I said, as part of my mania. So. My next one is a gift for my sister. So Stephanie, um, you need to look away for a few minutes and I'll talk in code. <laughs> All right, so this is what I'm stitching for my sister Stephanie. And I've been sharing this on my channel as I've worked on it. 
I started it on May 30th. So it was the last of my May Mania starts. And my um, goal this uh, today, I have finished the this part here. I added these two things here. I finished this out to here. And I'm starting to go back and work in all these little fill-ins. And then what I have left after that is to work my way to the bottom to get this little motif right there in there and all the little surrounding motifs. So depending on how much stitching time I have today, I will either finish it all the way halfway down or I'll finish it all the way. I don't know if I'll get to, to complete it today, but if I don't complete it today, I'm probably gonna stitch on it tomorrow until I do. My goal is to finish this one. I would really like to do that. I had originally thought I would do it in two sections, but they're going pretty quick. So um, I will take this one end off so you can see it. Isn't that precious? I think the colors are gorgeous. So that is what I'm working on today and I'm hoping that this will be my next finish. Okay, Stephanie, you can look back. That brings us up to June, <laughs> June 2022. I started on June 21st, a beautiful Stony Creek pattern called Autumn in the Village. I had decided that I wanted to try 36 count. I had ordered this beautiful fabric flare fabric called Confetti. It's on 36 count even weave and I just barely got started on the first house. So I want to get the pattern and show you what that's going to look like. This one's in a bag I made using Ivana Pfeiffer's uh, tutorial. I made it longer for a bigger Q-snap, but I've actually got this one on a scroll rod so I can work on it all the way across. But this is gorgeous. I had this gifted to me and um, I just, I sat in just in awe of it and I finally got up enough nerve to stitch it. And I decided to stitch it on the 36 count so it would be smaller when I try to frame it. Um, so there you go, that's what I'm gonna be putting on here. But I think that is gonna be absolutely beautiful on this confetti fabric. Let me show it to you one more time. You can see it's got little tiny, tiny flecks in the fabric of color. Little tiny orange and green, like leaf looking flecks. It's also got sparkle in it, but you can't see it. But to the naked eye, you can. It looks gorgeous. Okay, so then we start July. <laughs> so 22 starts in July for Christmas in July. So the very first Christmas in July stitch that I started was a full coverage. This is a gold collection uh, dimensions kit called Christmas Village Ornaments. There are six of them. I stitched this one last year. You'll see it when I start showing it to you on here. And this year I'm working on this one because of the puppy dog, the husband and wife. I started that one this year because the puppy dog and husband and wife and son reminded me of my family. So here is where I've started. This is the kit fabric. I have gridded it into the six quadrants that I need for my full coverage. And this is what I got started on. So I'll need to work on this one some more. I don't even think this one will make it this year. Full coverage is not my thing. I really have to be in the mood to work on it, but I am gonna continue working on that. The second July start for Christmas in July was called Merry Ho Ho. And this is the one I've laughed with you guys about because it's a Lizzie Kate. This is where I'm at on it. I thought this was gonna be a little tiny ornament. <laughs> it's not, it's a lot of stitching. And so, um, 
this is on a uh, some sort of fabric I had in my stash. It's very stiff. I'm not sure. It feels like a starched linen. It's a mystery fabric, but it I felt it was the right size, especially when I thought it was going to be a little ornament about this big. I was very nervous when I got started with it and saw how big it was. I was afraid it wasn't going to fit. But I will probably be making this either into a flat fold or a pillow. And so it'll be, it'll be okay. And this is uh, Lizzie Kate. Um, this is, I've got it on my card here. It's an off-white mystery linen. <laughs> and it was started July 2nd. My next start, I had it for a while before I began to start it and decided to put it in my Christmas in July, but it's Kringles. And I started up in the left-hand corner and started working on the roof. I'm gonna try to get the roof done this year if I can. And um, I'll show you where I've gotten to on Kringles. I've got all these roller frames sitting around me. Sorry, they're leaning up against the wall. But here's Kringles. And you can see I've got a good start to the roof line. I've got the snow on the top already. Uh, I've worked one color of the roof line across and I'm, I'm ready to now start a second color. So that's my Kringles. Okay, my next start was on July 12th and it's Christmas sentiments. And this is what it's gonna look like. It is a Stony Creek, and I did start for the first time ever that I ever know of at the bottom. I've never started at the bottom before. But I am doing this on a 28 count mocha silk weaver. And I'm doing this on 28 count because of the beads. I think the beads will fit there better but this is the border all the way across. So I'm gonna have extra fabric because I have it positioned this way and I'll be able to trim a lot of that off, but I'm gonna get a few um, sections of it done before I cut it down. Um, but that's where I got to. So I did a couple of passes on that bottom border and uh, to get it started. There are a couple of people working on this one. I noticed that um, Candy, the 614 Stitcher, uh, chose it to be one of hers, her whips that she worked on um, for this July. And she's a lot further than I am on hers. She's made um, great progress and that's wonderful. I'm really happy for her. And hers looks beautiful. The candy, it looks great. Um, okay, the next one is my Ornament Fairy by Jim Shore. And I ran out of project bags. I had to order these plastic ones off of Amazon right before I got started. <laughs> so here is the Jim Shore Mill Hill Kit Ornament Fairy. And I got started on that one on the 14th of July. And I used the Kit Ada. It is 14 count tan Ada. And this is how far I've gotten. I got a pretty good way on it for to be stitching on a new start. I, I was real pleased with that. I got a lot of the cross stitching done. And now if I can come down here and finish the um, ornament, uh, the cross stitch part of the ornament, I'll be ready for beads. I'm excited about that. That one has the potential to be finished this year, I think. So we'll see how that goes. But uh, started that one on the 14th. Then on July 16th, I started a Blackbird design called Early Christmas Morning. And it was important because I went to a stitching meetup with my guild and it was a Blackbird design focus day. So you were to stitch on something that was Blackbird if you had it, and you were to bring your Blackbird finish stitches to show on the brag table. So I took my Christmas garden, um, and I started this piece right here that is early Christmas morning. And this is where I 
got to on it. So I got one of the arching uh, greenery things done and I had just started putting in some of the red little berries. I hadn't finished those, but that's what I got done that day while we were at the stitching. We played games. We played trivia. We did all kinds of things. We ate lunch together. So we did things other than stitch, of course, and we visited, you know, a lot. But uh, anyway, so I got that one started on the 16th. I'm looking forward to finishing it. I don't know if I think that I will probably finish it into the drum or pillow look that it has there. I think that's a beautiful finish for it, and so I very well may do that. My next one is Miss Christmas Eve. Here we go. This is Miss Christmas Eve. I have long wanted to stitch her. I've had her in my stash for probably six months or longer. She was gifted to me um, for a birthday present. My sister Stephanie gifted her to me and all of the accoutrement to go with it. So I have her ready for rock and roll and I'm excited about that. But this was probably my smallest new start. Um, I'm sorry you keep shaking. I'm on a table and it's not very sturdy. But it, I had the most room here of anything that I did. So, um, so here is my start. This is her dress. It's right in the center of her dress. And so I'm looking forward to getting to do more on this one. This is on a fabric called uh, Cecil. It's 32 count linen. And I actually bought this from Julie McConnell. She showed it on her uh, pattern of the day or pattern of the week when she gives you a pattern and then recommends different fabrics and, and colorways for that pattern. And she showed this fabric with one of hers and I fell in love with it. And I called her immediately and said, I want that. <laughs> so she, she cut me a piece and mailed it to me, which was awesome. Okay, so that brings us up to July 18th. Then on July 20th, I started the French piece that is Snow and Mountains. Okay, this one is by Madame Lafie. So it's the first one of her patterns that I've done. And I tried to match that fabric perfectly. And this is where we got to. I started at the top border and I went all the way across and then I came back and I started all the way across again and went down just trying to get the outline of the border in there for this piece. This is the square around the windows, but it's quite, quite lovely and I enjoyed getting started on it and I look forward to getting back to it. Now that was started on a 32 count Lugana oatmeal by Color and Cotton and I started it on the 20th of July. On July 22nd, I started St. Nick's Berry. And I started on a beautiful blue fabric that's called Spearmint with white dots. Couldn't read my writing. 32 count Lugana. This is an Erica Michaels pattern and it was Erica Michaels month in July, so I got to participate that way by starting this berry. And here is my start. I love that fabric for this piece. I think it's gonna look really, really good. And I just got his little head done and I'm working on the beard now. So that one shouldn't take me too terribly long to finish. I know a lot of people finish them in one day, but I couldn't for that day for whatever reason. It was more stitching than I had time for on that 22nd of July. Then on the 24th of July, I started a magazine start called Welcoming Christmas. This is a... Um, Leisure Arts publication 
This is for the love of cross stitch. I actually like that picture as well. And this is a 1996, January of 1996 for the love of cross stitch. And here is the piece that I am doing, this little animal stack, what I'm calling an animal stack, I think is the first one I've ever seen back in 1996. Anyway, I had a good stitching day on the 24th and I got the top little bunny rabbit completely stitched and back stitched and everything. He's done. So that's a great thing. This is on a Fabrics by Stephanie, a hand dyed Fabrics by Stephanie called Seaside. It's a 32 count Lugana and that's Welcoming Christmas. On July 25th, I started a Teresa Kogut. This is my first Teresa Kogut start, and it was gifted to me um, from uh, Farm Girl. If you watch her floss tube or if you're a patron of hers, and Michelle, Farm Girl, and um, I won it on her channel a long time ago, and I finally got to, to stitch it. So I got started on it. I'm using all the called for Weeks Dye Works, um, whatever else she calls for. Don't have it in front of me right now, but here's the start of it. Here's the little corner where the Santa's head is up there, right up here. That's where I started in that corner. And that's what I got done on the start. On most of my starts, I got at least 300 stitches. Um, Miss Christmas Eve would be the exception. I think I got 200 on her, but um, I think for all the rest of them, I got at least 300 stitches in for a new start, which was great. On July 26th, I started a Mary Inglebright. This is called Small Gift. It's done on black. I did mine on Navy Ada. I had that Navy Ada in my stash, and I think it's going to be really striking and I got the top of her hat done so you can see that white really looks good on the navy blue you can really see it it's gonna pop it's gonna stand out I think um, these colors are bright and beautiful and I can't wait to get back to this one in fact I had um, someone on my channel uh, comment that they are stitching her or have her in their stash and they're gonna get her out, and they're gonna stitch along with me on this one in the coming year, and I'm pretty excited about that. I think that will be awesome to do that. So that brings us up to July 27th, and on July 27th, I started When Santa's Away. It's a With Thy Needle and Thread. You know I love Brenda Gervais. And so here's what that one looks like. And I mentioned when I started it, I didn't know till I really got to looking at the pattern. I'm so sorry you're shaking. Um, this is quilt batting. The whole top of that shoe, you don't stitch. You glue the quilt batting on. I think that's funny. I can't wait to do that. But I got started on a 32 count Lugana white tee by Color and Cotton. And this is just the Santa's coat on the mouse that's standing on the shoe. That's as far as I got. <laughs> this reminds me sort of of mania, you know, when people were starting a lot of starts and they may have only put in a few stitches on something to get it going so they could count it done, you know, that they got that start going. I kind of felt like that on a couple of these that that's all I got to do, but that's okay. I'll get back to them. Then my next start that I have still going is uh, started on the 29th of July, and it is my uh, Stitcher's 12 Days. It's a Sue Hillis. It's a long, skinny piece. That's what that looks like. And I got a comment this morning from one of my um, wonderful viewers who said that they knew of a person who had stitched it this year and they watched them stitch the whole thing on their channel and she gave me the channel name and I'm gonna go look her up 
and uh, go watch her and see how she did. But that's how far I got on that one, the first two lines of lettering. It's on 28 count Jobelin in a light gray. Then, that ended my Christmas in July stitching. I saved the Stitcher's 12 Days to be my last piece to get started because that was gonna be sort of my celebration to get to start it because I had had it in my stash for a while and I wanted to start it. So, the next thing I had to do was jump over and work on Whip Go. My whip go, one of the numbers called, I had already done. The second number called was a new start, and it's Halloween Quaker. So this is what I started. It is from Lila's Studio. Isn't that gorgeous? And I started up in this corner. I got that little tiny motif done and I got a start on the big one. My whip go goal is to get the big one stitched before I count the goal complete. So this is, this is all I got done. There's that first little thing in the corner and um, then here's the motif that I got started on. I started right here, of course you know, coming right down off of this, and I went down to here, and then I went back up this way, because, you know, I could count easily, and I was just trying to work my way around the circle, and then I'll do the middle. But I have a lot more stitching to do on this, but I think this one is gonna be really pretty. Really, really pretty. This fabric is called Fieldstone. It's by Color and Cotton. It's a 32 count Lugana. Um, you probably have noticed I use a lot of Lugana. That's my favorite fabric. I just prefer it over linen. I'm not a, I don't like slubs. Um, so I try to do the Lugana so that I can avoid them. But those are my whips. <laughs> All 28 of them. <laughs> um, so that's what I've got going on. Now, what I'll do now is I'll clean up and straighten up and uh, maybe on a new video, a different video, I will show you how I store everything, uh, how I keep everything um, in order for me to work on it. I have, I have a storage area for my current whips. And then I have a storage area for my patterns, my kitted projects and things that I haven't pulled forward yet. And I'll, I'll show you those two different areas. But uh, let me get all this put back away. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll see you next time. Thanks for uh, letting me share all my whips with you. I hope you saw something you liked and that you might want to grab on if you've got it in your stash. Let me know and start stitching it with me. I'd love to have you do that. Um, in the meantime, happy stitching everybody. Here we are outside Loki's house. Coco is looking, hoping, ever hopeful, that Loki will come out and play. <laughs> He's not out right now, so we'll keep walking. Maybe she can catch up with him later. <laughs>